Hello and welcome everyone to another exciting video. Today's topic, Triconi Nails. Now, Triconi Nails were invented in 1912 by a Swiss watchmaker who's actually had a lot of mountain peaks named after him, like Triconi Peak there. What he did was invent this nail-on, staple-on boot system that would attach to the welt to your shoe and give you grip on rock and ice and all other kinds of elements you face when you're mountain climbing. As you can see here, Triconis come in lots of different shapes and sizes, but they got playful ads and stuff from Switzerland, so I decided to throw them in there. See, they have these heel-mounted ones, which are flat, as well as the welt-mounted ones that wrap around the sole of your boot. So these are secured by nails or staples, or they even have screw-on heel clamp versions. And these just help you get a really good grip when you're mountain climbing or hunting or anything with ice and snow. And when you double up with these Triconi nails and hobnails, you really have a formidable grip surface for when you're moving around. These are on a pair of 1940s linesman boots. And we're going to take a look here and show you guys how they're installed. So here's a couple more pictures of them. And enjoy the video, you guys. It's a long one. We have a different format today. Make sure you're in focus here. We're putting some tricuni nails on my uh, hunting boots. So these are uh, 40s line horse hide boots. I'm putting some hobnails and triconies in just to make them a little better for winter. I got, a, got one done here. I just gotta get the other one to match. So, it's out here. I don't know what triconi nails are, they're just these little hardened face things brazed onto a, onto a hook that goes around the sole of your boot. It'll fit on like that. What we gotta do is get these about the same as the other pair. What you do is you get them seated on your welt on top and you drive them down. Just like that. Nails. Nails on the bottom. And the heel has staples. One down. So, I like to get start kitty corner, top and bottom. These are very finicky. It's a uh, process putting these on. You get one started on the bottom and one started on the top. And from there, you can uh, drive home your nails. Usually get two in the bottom, two in the top, and move on. One down. Next one should be about fingers gap over. All right. Here. Look the opposite way. Right up there. And again. Put on the side. Now these are very specialty items. They're very hard to find. in Switzerland makes them. Here 
Again, kitty corner. Up to the top. Aim these nails in two. And a second one on the top. And this is a cobbler's hammer I fixed up. Just one of those relics you have laying around at the farm. there and here on this outside a thumbs gap these don't have to be absolutely perfect I want them within about eight sixteenth or eighth of an inch or something like that And when you set these nails, you gotta get them started and make sure your first hit is good. Again, spin around to the top. Bring your nails in at an angle. Too much. going. Yeah, that cool profile on the outside. I put one in my boot and I realized, well, I'm never wearing these boots in the house again. Because chances are your wife will in fact kill you if you uh, mark up her wood floors. It's mine wood. So this kind of crimps the welt together, which is nice. Uh, the other boot here. Uh, it's welt was a little bit thicker on the top. It was pretty hard to get these uh, nails properly started and seated on them. That's a nice, somewhat permanent solution. You got old boots that need a little love. And you want to use them in winter when they're not really set up for that. The kind of funny thing about these older boots is that they don't seem to have a linear build construct or construction. I notice on those other boots the had hard nails in there too. And that's because you don't want all the weight of the of your body just on the outside of your sole. So those hard nails help to spread out the weight distribution on your foot. Really crimp on good. Okay, looks like I just went thumb width all the way. So two more on the edge here. One there, one there. And then uh, there's different ones. They're uh, straight on the side for the, for the heel.
hope I'm keeping this in focus. And then uh, in frame for you guys. So that first hit. Really want to make sure you get that first hit driven in properly. And they kind of move till you get opposing nails in. Because the leverage on the on the triconies are is a uh, See, this one I bent Get the straightener out of the vise, but they gave me enough here. Get a good I'll wear these out to the farm. demo there. Things hurt your legs when you're pounding these nails and so if you got a proper sh an anvil for shoes it'll make this job a lot easier. This is a hard rubber sole. It's really made for uh, climbing, for climbing gaffs and stuff like that. So they don't, uh, pinky space there. They don't, uh, doesn't really grip really well. But it'll grip now. That's for dang sure. Do the nails stick through the sole? No, they do not. If you're hesitant about driving nails into your boots, uh, your boot is pretty much nailed together. And that's how boots are constructed. You probably watched Nick's boots videos. amount of nails in there then you go and forget to do something like drive the top in before you drive the bottom in just pound it in you want to make sure that you're going through the layers not with the layers nice soft faced hammer you don't want to be using a textured face on your boots as far as I'm aware this will be the only video on YouTube with someone actually putting triconies on them niche market old school technology would this be easier with a shoe anvil I think it would be but it'd be hard to get the tops no matter what
And these have been made the same for 100 years, I think. All the literature I see on them is all from the 20s and 30s, so... Okay. That's the tricone portion of this boot. We'll move on to these uh, hobnails. These are cloverleaf hobs. See them there. Uh, these are, again, first hit's the most important. And just like that. Next one, right there. Yeah, see, they like to bounce out. See this on a lot of, like, parade boots and stuff like that. But the nice thing about these is that they're their own little nail, so there's no extra hardware associated with them. This is going to be a long video, you guys, sorry. Oh, you guys like long videos if you're here. One, two, three, three. That's pretty good there. These are a cast uh, nail, so I wouldn't want to use too hard of a hammer on them. This uh, mallet's actually cast, this hammer's cast iron, so. Okay. So then on the heel of this boot, oh, once again. misses in. So for this you're gonna wanna get your triconies because they're moving on to the well I guess I can finish with these hobnails here. I put these hobnails on here in the uh, gap of the boot so they would start to have a little traction in here. Looks like I just spaced them kind of evenly. These are the hardest nails to put in, I find. Again, first hit's the most important. Where they go shooting off into the distance, never to be seen again. These are more of a forged and then, uh, whatchamacallit calls it. hand forged because the shanks are square on these. You don't want to put it right on the stitching either. Heels about the same thing. Only difference is that the <coughs> tricolor is now sideways in the heel. I'll show you these steel tricolors. Much longer nails too. They have staples as well. So, like you can see, I got to drive nails in all these holes still. But. Uh, 
that will come. So this triconia you can see is straight. Just pop it on back here. And then you got big long nails to put in there. Really easy. There you go. And that's how it is all the way around on the heel. You take one of these staples, which have uh, serrations in them. And we'll tap to close them up. Aim up. And yeah, just drive in. Oh, watch it shoot off another distance at a million miles an hour. Yeah, a cobbler's anvil would be really nice here. Weird leg, it kind of like this. Watch it fly out at a million miles an hour again. I don't like the staples as much as the nails, they kind of... Staples can kind of kick out on you. So, <clears throat> do with that. Let's grab your nippers. <laughs> and you cut it in half and pull it out. Dustly. Make sure you drop it on the rug so you can stab yourself in the foot later. Keeping it real. But anyway, there's nothing keeping you from using the small nails. Uh, I don't think the staples will hold any better. So I've just been using these little nails when, when the staples don't want to work. Only problem is with these boots, the heel cap is so old on it that uh, it is prone to splitting. I have to be a little careful about that, how close you get to the edges. Okay, well, I'll show you when it's done. Get the rest of these brackets on. We'll see how they look.